In this tutorial, we are gonna learn how to create a real gallery app that will display the images and videos inside your phone's storage, where you can zoom and pan images and also play videos with many controls like play and pause, seeking the video, and changing the playback speed. Let's start by adding these dependencies inside your powerspec.yaml. Make sure to stop your app execution and run it again to make these dependencies work. If you are building your app for iOS, you need to add these two lines inside the iOS runner and put out plist. And if you are targeting iOS 11 and above, you need to change your title to this that's pretty much the same as this one. So the first screen we're gonna return in this app is home screen, inside which we now we have a scaffold. Let's return a center, and inside that we have an elevated button. Inside which we're gonna ask for permission using the photo manager dot request permission, and then listen for the state. And if the set dot is off, it means if the permission was granted, we should navigate to the gallery screen. Let's hit save. And now when we click on open gallery, it is going to ask for permission. And if I click allow, we are navigated to gallery screen that is blank for now. Gallery screen is where we get our images and videos and display them as grid. Let's get all our images and videos. For that purpose, we define a list called assets. This is of type asset entity that is a special data type that can hold either an image or a video. At the next step, we define a method for getting all our assets, inside which we get all our assets from the range of 0 to 100,000. This is a very big number, so it makes sure it gets all the images from a gallery and we put it inside our asset and then we set the set to update the UI. Let's also now call this method to fetch our assets. At the next step, I want to define the UI of the application. For that purpose, inside the scaffold, I first of all create an app bar and then a grid without builder for displaying our thumbnails. We first define a grid delegate with a cross axis count of 3, an item count that is assets.length, and lastly an item builder that gives us the index. So we return an asset thumbnail and pass our assets. Let's define our asset thumbnail. For that, I first of all create an stateless widget. We have one property here of sub asset entity and inside the build method we return a future builder inside the future we get the thumbnail data and inside the builder we get a snapshot so we first of all get the data from a snapshot if it is null we return a circular progress indicator and if it is not we return an image.memory so now if we hit save you see that our thumbnails are displayed correctly right now there is no way to differentiate between images and videos it is better to display a play button on top of our videos. For that, I put my image inside the stack, wrap a position around it, and under that, if the asset type is a video, I would like to display a white icon. So if we hit save now, you see that an icon is displayed on top of our video. So let's make our images clickable. For that purpose, we wrap our stack with an ink fill, and inside the on top property, every time we click on any image, we navigate to the image view. So let's define our image view. First of all, I create an stateless widget. I get a parameter of type future file. And inside the scaffold, we have an app bar. Inside the body, we have a future builder of type file. And inside the future, we put our image file. We have a builder. And inside that, we first of all get our data out of a snapshot. If our data is null, we only return a container. That means the image is empty. Otherwise, we return a photo view. So let's hit save now. And now if we click on an image, we can zoom our images and we can pan our images. Right now, if we click on any file, we are going to return an image view. But I want to open a video player in case I click on a video. So for that, instead of returning an image view, I'm going to first of all ask if our asset type is an image. I am going to return an image view. Otherwise, let's just return a video view. So let's now define our video view. This is going to be an stateful widget inside which we have a parameter of the future file, the file being our video. So let's define some controller. We first have a video play controller. This is responsible for playing and pausing our video. We also have a chibi controller and a chibi widget. The chibi widget is responsible for displaying control over our video and for that reason we need a chibi controller. We also need a boolean flag to check if our video is initialized or not. We need to define a method for initializing our video. So we create a method called init video. The first thing we do is to get our video and then we initialize our video player controller, pass the video, 
set the looping to true, and also initialize our video. When our video is initialized, we set our initialized flag to true, then we need to initialize our TV controller. And as you see, it is dependent on video player controller. Let's set the auto play and looping to true. And lastly, we initialize our video player widget to a TV widget and pass our TV controller. This is the exact widget that we are gonna display on our video to give us controls. Inside the init set method, we call our init video function. And inside the dispose, we are gonna dispose both of our controllers. Now let's do the UI part. So inside the scaffold, we first of all create an app bar. And inside the body, we check if the video is initialized. If it's initialized, we return an aspect ratio, get the aspect ratio of the video. And also as a child, we return the video player widget. That is the TV widget that we defined earlier. And if the video is not initialized, we return a circular progress indicator inside the center widget. So now let's hit save. And right now, if we open our video, you see that we have a video player where we can play a video, seek a video, but what play a video, and also change the playback speed. If you want the source code for the application, I will put a link in the description. By the way, if you find our content useful, please make sure to subscribe and hit on the bell icon. So that was all for this tutorial. See you in the next one.